Hi kids, welcome to our show all about trains. I'm Jeff. If you love trains, stay right here because we've got a great show for you. We've got a lot to do, so let's get started. All aboard! Through my daddy's eyes and a child's dream, I travel along by a gentle stream. Through the hills and the valleys low, to a time and place so long ago. Headed down that railway line on a steamer train from another time. I feel the wind across my face like a memory I can't erase. By the mountains and the rolling plains, it's all about trains. Come aboard, let's take a ride through the cityscapes and the countryside. Travel far under starry nights and the gentle glow of the signal lights. Sing a song and tell a tale of the glory days on the mighty rail. The engine shouts and the whistle screams as we glide along on clouds of steam. By the farms and fields of golden grains, it's all about trains. 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 All about trains. A lonesome whistle echoes across the prairie. The train clanks down the tracks. What we have here is a steam locomotive. You don't see many today, but they used to be the kings of the rails. After World War II, the railroads replaced steam engines with more efficient diesel and electric locomotives. Thanks to Ted Rita of the Heston Steam Museum in LaPorte County, Indiana, and volunteers like Ted all over the country, some old steamers have been lovingly restored and are still pounding the rails today. And whenever they run, the crowds gather. I think it's because they are big and powerful. Smoke shoots out from the side and pours out the smokestack. They make a lot of noise. People love the ringing bell and, oh my, that whistle. Then there's the engineers smiling and waving. The whole package is just irresistible. And steam locomotives played a vital role in our country's history. So it's important to show our kids what steam locomotives looked like and what they sounded like. My kids love them. So do I. The cab of a steam engine is a hot, busy place. There are lots of gauges, levers, and control knobs. The wheels creak. You hear a sigh, a hiss, and the steady swoosh of steam escaping. Look down to the right and you see clouds of steam rushing out under pressure. Blow the whistle and more steam shoots into the air. And always, the people stand and watch, smiling and waving. The engineer runs the train. A steady, wise hand is needed to know just the right spot for the controls. And he has to know when to open the valve so more steam gets to the pistons. The fireman shovels wood or coal into the firebox to make sure the fire stays hot and the steam pressure stays up. The pungent smell of hot grease, 
Smoke and steam mix and fills the cab. The fireman leans out the window and pulls the long leather cord and the bell rings. At the same time, the engineer blows the steam whistle. The old steamer settles into a chuffing, clanking rhythm. There's always something to do. Check gauges. You have to always check on steam pressure. Keep the fire hot. Watch out ahead. And of course, ring the bell. Blow the whistle. And wave. The sounds, the smells, the bumpy ride over the uneven rails. What a thrill. You can't help but smile, wipe some grease off your face, and enjoy the ride. I've got an idea. Let's go over to Don's house and play trains. This is my pal, Don Zorowski. He lives in New Buffalo, Michigan. Don, when did all this get started? Well, it started about 65 years ago. In 92, it came back out uh, for reconstruction. It's been added on three or four times. This is what it is today. What was your first train? First train set came from Santa Claus, the Blue Comet. 
at one time in my mother's life, she worked for the Burlington Railroad, and her boss, who was the purchasing agent for the Burlington Railroad, came one Sunday, and he and my dad put it together for me, so that was kind of fun. And that's where it all started, and went on from there. Everywhere I look, there's something going on. Did this layout start out this big? Well, this layout started out as a uh, four by eight shade of plywood, and it's been expanded three times. It is now six foot by 15 foot. Well, there's two outside loops. Uh, there's seven switches that are all keyed together. And if I can remember which switch to throw, it'll, they'll all run. Yeah, there's 125 foot of super out track. One ZW powers it all. Don grew up in a suburb west of Chicago. Uh, Riverside, actually, is where I was born and raised. Mother did all the shopping on Cermak Road and Berwyn and Cicero, and uh, that, that represents some of the buildings that are there along with the streetcar. Uh, it was the same streetcar I rode when I went to school, and on Saturdays you got to take the streetcar to go down to the Berwyn Theater to watch John Wayne. What trains are you running today? The engines run today is the Allegheny, Amtrak Genesis is running. What accessories do you operate? Well, we have the coal loader, cattle corral. We have the barrel loader. We have the American flag, of course. Oh, the gate man? Yeah, you have to have a gate man. Does your wife, Marilyn, share your enthusiasm for trains? Not likely. Is she happy when you bring home a new train? Oh, she just loves it, but I wait till she goes to the beauty shop so I can sneak it in. <laughs> I see you have a sales slip from Chick's Hobby Shop back in 1962. What set did you buy? The line all set was the uh, Santa Fe, the F3 Santa Fe, war bonnet. Four passenger cars, the Transformer, uh, the big ZW, and a few other cars that went with it. 87 bucks with the ZW. Don has trains both at home and at work. When I think when you're a youngster, you're just fascinated by the motion and the size, and just watching them go by is fascinating. And then it, 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 if you become involved as a youngster, it, it seems to continue on through your life. The kids seem to get into the, the Thomas very deeply for the push toys, and then they just continue to be interested in it. And when they get to be about five years old, they're kind of done with Thomas and want to go to the electrics. So hopefully it'll continue. Whether it's going to be toys forever, I don't know. Don, what's your favorite train? Well, the Santa Fe War Bonnet, of course, was the top of the line. And it, it didn't really make much difference what, what name it was. It was just there's always room for one more train. Old-time railroaders had a special way to talk. It was fun and colorful and sometimes sounded very strange. If you were walking around a railroad yard back in the days when the steam locomotive was king, you would have had to learn a whole new language to talk the railroaders way. The engineer is the pilot of the train. He was also called the hogger, eagle eye, hogmaster, hog jockey, pig mauler, speed gauger, grunt, throttle king, plug puller, and swell head. A reckless fast driving engineer was called a glory hunter, highball artist, or ballast burner. If you're on the main line, then you're riding the high iron. 
When the engine sways side to side, it's doing the ball and jack. A ball of fire, or a red ball, is a speedy steam locomotive. Gods of the iron were huge, powerful locomotives like this Union Pacific Challenger. When the engineer runs wide open, it's called rack the stack. When he blows the whistle, he's pulling the pig's tail. The fireman rides up in the cab with the engineer, and his main job is to keep the boiler fire going by making sure enough coal or wood gets into the firebox. The fireman is also called bakehead, ash cat, stoker, soda jerk, dust raiser, fire eater, and fire boy. Coal was called diamond, so the fireman was also a diamond duster, diamond pusher, or diamond cracker. When a fireman missed the firebox door and spilled coal all over the cab floor, it's called being sloppy with diamonds. The shovel a fireman uses is called a banjo or scoop, and a steamer with two firebox doors is called goo goo eyes. They call the boiler, with the raging fire inside, the devil's dance hall. All aboard! The conductor was called Ramrod, the Brains, Skipper, Big O, Big Ox, or dinger, because he pulled the cord that rang a bell. A brakeman is a roughneck. Red cap is a porter in a passenger station. When you hear the biscuits hang high, that means a good meal is hard to find. A zookeeper is the man who operates the crossing gates at a passenger station. Throw out the anchor means to quit work for the day. Gondolas were gons or cradles refrigerator cars, freezers, or reefers. A tank car is an oil can. Passenger cars were cushions, glass cars, plush run, or grass cars, because passengers love scenery. A mainliner was a mainline fast passenger train, and the sleeper car was called the snoozer. A goat, peanut roaster, coffee pot, or bobtail is a little yard switcher. A lightning slinger is a telegraph operator. Double the fill means we have to split the train in half in order to make it up a steep grade. Pin ahead and pick up two behind one means to cut off the engine, pick up three cars from a siding, put two on the train, and set the first one back on the siding. Put on the nose bag and use your lunch hooks means to eat a meal. If you've gone fishing, you've been fired. Railroad workers are called gandy dancers. That's because many of the tools they use, including the shovels, were made by the Gandhi Manufacturing Company of Chicago. For fun, they would wedge a shovel in between the rail and the ballast. The handle would stick out at about 45 degrees. Then the workers would see how long each could dance on the end of the handle. That's where the term Gandhi dancer comes from. When an axle bearing overheats and catches on fire, it's called a hot box. It's also known as a blazer, hot jewel, and stinker. Cooling the journal is called freezing the hub. All darky, no sparky means the train is free of any hot boxes.
The railroad is called the Glory Road, and a railroader's paradise is called the Big Rock Candy Mountain. Then there's the mythical railroad at the end of the rainbow, called the Indian Valley Line. That's where the pay is good, the weather is sunny and warm, you don't have to work hard, there's a hot meal every night, and you have a soft, clean bed to sleep in. Every railroad worker dreams of working on the Indian Valley Line before heading for the Big Rock Candy Mountain. Say, if you ever wonder just how to talk the railroader way, pull up a chair and sit a spell, cause it's your lucky day. Listen close and you will learn to talk the railroad way. A strawberry patch is a red caboose as seen from the rear. A glory hunter is a reckless type, a fast driving engineer. Miles of rail straight and flat, they call the old racetrack. If you want that throttle open wide, it's time to wrap the stack. Rounders big and small, listen to what I say. Did you ever wonder just how to talk the railroader way? Pull up a chair and sit a spell, cause it's your lucky day. Listen close and you will learn to talk the railroad way. If you want to hear that whistle blow, say pull on the pig's tail. When you're riding on high iron, you're steaming on the mainline rail. The conductor's called the skipper, or sometimes he's called the brain. And black diamonds are the chunks of coal that fuel a steamer train. To all you rounders, big and small, listen to what I say. Did you ever wonder just how to talk the railroader way? Pull up a chair and sit a spell, cause it's your lucky day. Listen close and you will learn to talk the railroad way. Ball and jack is a side to side car swaying to and fro. And if you've gone fishing, then the boss has let you go. If your engine needs some oil, say it's time to grease the pig. An iron horse is a steamer train, powerful and big. To all ye rounders, big and small, listen to what I say. Did you ever wonder just how to talk the railroader way? Pull up a chair and sit a spell, cause it's your lucky day. Listen close and you will learn to talk the railroad way. Listen close and you will learn to talk the railroad way. What does the Golden Gate Bridge, a skyscraper, a diesel streamliner, and surgical instruments used by doctors in the operating room have in common? Give up? They're all made of steel. We've all heard of iron and we've all heard of steel, but what's the difference? Steel is iron with most of the impurities removed. Removing the impurities makes steel much stronger than iron. To make steel, you start with pig iron, then mix in scrap metal, iron ore, and limestone. All this is poured into a giant furnace and melted into a glowing, hot, molten liquid. The iron ore and limestone forms a slag that floats on the surface. Impurities like phosphorus and sulfur float out of the iron into the slag. Then the slag is poured out. Only the molten steel remains. 
The molten steel is then mixed with various alloys to create different types of steel. For example, adding chromium creates stainless steel. Stainless steel is shiny and resistant to rust. For a good example of just how resistant to rust stainless steel is, check out the top of the Chrysler Building in New York City. It was completed in 1930, and it's still shiny. The molten steel mixture is poured into casting machines, which convert the molten steel into steel slabs. The long slabs are cut into various lengths. Some slabs are 30 feet long and can weigh 20 tons. Big machines pick up the slabs and carry them to other places in the steel mill where they are cut into thin sheets and rolled into coils. China is the largest producer of steel in the world and steel is the most recycled material in the world. Steel is the backbone of bridges, the skeleton of skyscrapers, and the framework for automobiles, tractors, and big 18-wheelers. Trains play a big part in the steel-making process. Gondolas carry scrap metal into the steel mill, where huge magnetic cranes unload the scrap metal. Special insulated hot metal cars, called bottle or torpedo cars, because they sort of look like a torpedo or bottle, are used to transport the various molten liquids around the steel mill. Hot metal cars are identified by how much weight they can hold. The larger torpedo type can carry 125 tons of molten steel. This smaller hot metal car carries 75 tons. The cars are designed to withstand the incredible heat generated by the molten steel. If you're standing near the track, even if it's the coldest day in the winter, you can feel the heat as the train passes. And at night, you can see the glow. It's quite a sight. Trains are also used to transport steel. You've probably seen railroad flat cars like these carrying rolled steel coils, I-beams, or long steel pipes. Steel is 100% recyclable and can be recycled forever without losing its strength or durability. That's a good thing, because the more things we can recycle, the better it is for good old Mother Earth. A caboose used to be at the end of every freight train. The caboose was the train's office. It housed the brakeman, conductor, and other crew members. The crew would eat and sleep and just hang out in the caboose. The caboose had many names. Clown Wagon, Fool's Festival, Crow's Nest, Temple of Knowledge, and Brain Wagon. This top section with windows was called the cupola or library. This is where the brakeman sat to keep all of his records. They called the toolbox under the caboose the possum's belly. The end of the caboose is called the strawberry patch. Don't ask me why, I'm just telling you how these old railroaders talked. There were many different types of cabooses. Here are a few of them. Bay window, extended vision, porthole, and wood-sided. The caboose was a charming and funky part of railroad history. 
And a freight train just doesn't seem the same without an old rickety caboose at the end with smoke coming out of the stack. Where have all the cabooses gone? I haven't seen one for so long. At the end of a passing train Since they've gone it's just not the same Where have all the cabooses gone? Gone, gone, gone Where have all the cabooses gone? The steamer trains and the railroad songs The soda shops and the five and dime Faded shadows of a distant time Where have all the cabooses gone? Gone, gone, gone We all lived in smaller towns Knew every corner, street and sound And everybody knew each other's name Those days are gone and it seems a shame is gone I haven't seen one for so long at the end of a passing train since they've gone it's just not the same where have all the cabooses gone 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 Building a train layout is fun because you get to create your own little world exactly the way you want it. And you learn about working with wood, electricity, and creating scenery. It's fun for the entire family too. There's something to do for everyone. Okay, so let's build a layout. The first step is to build the table. We use two by fours for legs and braces. The tabletop is 3 4 inch plywood framed with 2 by 4s Now attach the legs and braces to the plywood and we have one table. Next we cover the plywood with homosote. Homosote is also called soundboard. It absorbs some of the noise the trains make. Now we paint the homosote a nice grassy shade of green and add ground cover to give the surface more texture. While the paint is still wet, sprinkle on artificial grass. Next, we have to come up with a track plan. We're going to use Lionel Fast Track because it came with the set we bought. Of course, we had to buy a lot more track to build this layout. I like two outer loops going around the entire layout. It's neat to watch two trains pass each other going in opposite directions. We connect the loops with switches, then add a figure eight inside on the lower level, and add an upper level with a lift bridge. Wiring is very important. You get power to the track by hooking two wires from the track to the transformer. Switches and accessories also have to be wired. Everything is operated by the control panel at the end of the layout. All these buttons, lights, and levers make me feel like a real engineer. I love to see trains disappear into a tunnel, then pop out somewhere else. To make a mountain, you first build the framework. Then you shape the mountain by bending chicken wire and stapling it to the framework. Next, we cover the chicken wire with wet plaster cloth. After the plaster dries, paint the mountain green, just like you painted the top of the table. Then add artificial grass for texture. Now we add rocks and trees of different colors to give the mountain a colorful, realistic look. We use track supports to support the track on the second level coming out of the mountain. 
It's way cool to see trains passing over and under each other. Now let's add a bridge, stream, and waterfall. Every layout should have a little business district and a railroad yard where rolling stock is stored. We put two magnetic cranes in the yard area. This one with the scoop is for coal. The other has a magnet to pick up pipes, rails, scrap iron, and other stuff made of metal. A layout needs lots of buildings and trees. We put the big trees on the bottom and smaller trees as we go up the mountain. This gives the illusion of great distance from the bottom of the mountain to the top. It's an old theatrical device called compressed perspective. Now add a few people, cars, and trucks. More trees, some shrubbery, put lights inside some of the buildings, and add street lights. Let me say this about lights. The more lights, the better. I love to turn the room lights off and watch the layout in the dark. All the little lights make the layout look like a magical fantasy land. Street lights, light towers, spotlights, the lights from passenger cars, and headlights on the trains. Well, the layout looks pretty good to me. Now it's time to play trains. The gorgeous orange, maroon, and gray Hiawatha is a bright star in any rail fan's galaxy. Built by Alco, these Atlantic 264 shrouded locomotives were designed for speed and the design worked. In the mid-1930s, they headed the legendary streamlined Hiawatha passenger train and reached speeds of over 100 miles per hour. The Milwaukee Road's Hiawatha traveled from Chicago to Milwaukee, then along the Mississippi River to the Twin Cities. The first Hiawatha trains ran in 1935. By 1945, there were three routes carrying the Hiawatha name. The Hiawathas, with their stylish and luxurious passenger cars, were known as the fastest trains in America. This is the classic beaver tail observation car designed to give the passengers a panoramic view of the stunning scenery along the Mississippi River. After World War II, the proud Hiawathas suffered the same fate as all steamers. They were first reduced to local freight service, then scrapped. Only pictures, paintings, toys, and memories of the classic Hiawatha steamers exist today. Well, time to go. I have to do my homework. 
Hope you enjoyed the show. Through my daddy's eyes and a child's dream, I travel along by a gentle stream. Through the hills and the valleys low, to a time and place so long ago. Headed down that railway line on a steamer train from another time. I feel the wind that frosts my face like a memory I can't erase. By the mountains and the rolling plains, it's all about trains. Come aboard, let's take a ride to cityscapes and the countryside. Travel far under starry nights in the gentle glow of the signal lights. Sing a song and tell a tale of the glory days on the mighty rail. The engine shouts and the whistle screams as we glide along on clouds of steam. By the farms and fields of golden rains, it's all about trains. It's all about trains. It's all about trains. It's all about trains.